Hey guys, welcome back to Zyka's Kitchen. It's that time of year again when we get to spend some time with our loved ones. And first of all, I would just like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and I hope everyone stays safe and healthy over the holidays. Hope that you all have a beautiful little cook up in your own homes and really enjoy the time together. So the recipe that I am sharing with you guys today, I was taught many, many moons ago by Anthea's mother, Tula. She helped me open Zyka's kitchen and she was there for the first week of trade and really helped me get the shop started. It was a big rush to get it open. Eventually we got it open and she was the first one there on the first day when the doors opened. Every Christmas we'd head down to Melbourne and we'd spend some time with the families down there. And one year I said, hey, would you mind if I did a lamb spit? She had a spit. So every year from that year on, I would do a lamb spit at Christmas time. It was always on Boxing Day, so I could sit around the spit and watch the Boxing Day test, and that was just brilliant. That was the start of the holidays, and we just knew that we had a little bit of time away from the shop so we could just wind down and have a good time with family. First thing we want to do is get some lemon juice. Don't worry about the seeds, that's fine. Into there, well, two whole lemons for this one. When I first did a lamb on the spit, I was in Melbourne and we were down there for Christmas and all the family was like, Stavro, you gotta, you gotta put the lemon juice on the spit. And I'm like, no, 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 just rosemary, it's fine. Rosemary, salt, pepper, oil, it's gonna be perfect. And they, everyone was in my face about it. Until I actually tried it, I didn't believe it, but it actually creates the most beautiful flavor over the coals. We're gonna add generous amount of garlic because we do have a nice big leg of lamb. Now, oregano. I'm gonna add all of this oregano and we're just gonna chop that up. It doesn't have to be super fine. All we want it to do is really just open its flavors up just by cutting the leaves. And we'll get that into the bowl. Next, we're gonna get some rosemary because rosemary really goes well with lamb. And these are my two favorite herbs to use with lamb. And basically with the rosemary, just pull the leaves off the stalks, just like that, working backwards. Pulling against the grain and just give that a nice little rough chop up also. You can really smell those leaves when you cut them, which is exactly what we're looking for. We'll get that in there like that. A little bit of pepper and some salt. And we'll just get all that in there. And that's it there. That's a beautiful marinade. Now that we have got our marinade ready for our lamb, I've got a whole leg here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna debone that and we're gonna get that into that marinade. And we want it to marinate for a couple of hours. You could do this the night before and it would be exceptional. So basically we're just gonna debone this guy, just following the bone with your knife and you're gonna cut around the bone to get that meat off. Once you understand where the bone and the knuckle works, it's, they're pretty, it's quite easy to debone. You don't need to have nice, neat cuts for this. I like to actually have that meat sliced the way it is because it allows that, that marinade to really get in amongst the meat and do its work. And just like that, we have one deboned leg of lamb and we're just gonna cut this guy open like this so everything's nice and open. Now that we have got our deboned leg of lamb, 
We're just gonna get a little bit of olive oil and sprinkle that across there like that. And just rub that in to the flesh because basically we're gonna season this and we want that seasoning to stick to that olive oil. Generous amount of salt. A little bit of rain around today, so it's gonna be an interesting day to get this guy on the coals. I bought a little rotisserie from King's. Really keen to get that, see what that's like. Little battery operated thing. Flip over and rub that olive oil in again. Salt and pepper, be generous. Because as that cooks, that'll help draw out the moisture in the meat. You get these beautiful charred flavors from that juice dropping onto those coals. Some pepper. Get this into that bowl and just work. Work that through the juices. Make sure it gets a really nice coating all over. Perfect. I'm just gonna press that in there like that. Just like that, we have our lamb marinated. We'll get that covered. Just put some cling film over that. Just press it down to the meat to get rid of as much air as possible so that that marinade can really do its work. Get that covered again, just like that. And we're gonna put that in the refrigerator for two hours let the marinade do its work. We're gonna make a dish with this in the near future. I'm gonna show you how to utilize this on your campfire. And we're gonna make a beautiful, delicious lamb casserole using these bones. Make sure you get those wrapped up and put to the side because these recipes are made for outdoors. This meat has become a little bit pale and that's because of the acidity from the lemon. The lemon really, really makes this dish. I cannot tell you how much it makes it. I'm just gonna look at the best way to skewer this. It's gonna be straight through there. And we wanna keep that nice and close together and put that in there like that. And we just kinda want it to cook evenly and have that nice and compact, just like that. And we can save these juices here. We're gonna put this into our little motor here. Make sure that's in there nicely. And she's just gonna be spinning around like that. It should be pretty good. I'm just gonna make one little alteration to this. You can see those two flaps that keep flopping around. We'll stop that there. And just get a little bit of butcher's twine and we'll just tie them up nice and snug. We'll let that go for about an hour. We'll check those coals and we'll come back and have another look. It's been on for about half an hour. You can start seeing there's a little bit of color coming into it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, just start drizzling a little bit of our marinade over this. Do this every half hour or so. And see how that gets that fire excited. It's looking good. So we've had just a little bit of weather move over. So I've had to make this makeshift shelter to protect the coals but you can see that this lamb is starting to look really good there's a little bit of fat starting to drop onto those coals which is creating a nice bit of just a light flame that's kind of licking the surface The lemon juice in the marinade is really starting to become aromatic. I just keep topping this up with uh, some fresh lemon juice, which has still got all the herbs in there. These coals I've kept moving around and I'm adding about five to six heat beads every 20 minutes or so, and just make sure that you keep them moving around to make sure that that ash doesn't stay on there. All in all, it's coming along nicely and it should be quite delicious when it's finished.
We're gonna get the pita bread and we're just gonna put it down like that. Just quickly turn that rotisserie off. And holding this pita bread underneath this lamb as we carve it, all that fat and beautiful juices internally are gonna drop onto that. And that's just gonna create that, a beautiful little bit of extra flavor in our souvlaki. On the bottom. We've got a bit hanging down there. Woo, look at that. Good catch there, Haz. Boy, the smell is absolutely sensational. It's so tender. So, so tender. Okay, that should be enough. Turn that back on, let that do its work. Okay, so we've got some beautiful tzatziki here that I made last night. If you wanna check out that recipe, click the link above. It is so worth it and that really makes this recipe. Put that onto the upper end of where you're going to do your fold, just so that it tucks into that meat. Little bit of onion, fresh sliced tomato. We'll get that on there like this. And we'll finish that off with some beautiful greens. I'm gonna roll that up. Just like that. And voila. We've got our very own lamb spits of Lakia in the backyard. That lemon is so good. In 2013, my parents had never met Tula, so we all decided that we would catch up in Phillip Island. I rang the local butcher down there and I organised the lamb for the spit. So my parents got to Phillip Island uh, and met Tula and it was the first time they'd ever met and Anthea and I weren't even there. So it was so great that they just, they got on really well. We took the staff out on the 20th, which was our last day of trade for the year, to have their little Christmas party. Tula messaged me and she said that she was on her way back to Melbourne to pick us up for the next day. It was very exciting. Very exciting, because I knew that it was going to be probably one of the best holidays ever. We had both families there. I was so excited to be getting on that plane the next day. We got a phone call from Steph and she was just a little bit concerned because there was an accident on the main road into Phillip Island. We couldn't get in contact with Tula. Everyone was starting to kind of panic a little bit and I asked my dad to drive up the road to see if he could see anything. Eventually I got in contact with the police and and I said that we couldn't get a hold of her. And is it her that's been in the accident? And he said, unfortunately, yes, it is her in the accident and she's deceased. I had to walk back to the restaurant not knowing how to tell Anthea that her mother had just been killed in a car accident. The mother that we were going to see that very next day and we had waited all year to catch up again. And basically the world just turned upside down. So instead of having, sharing Christmas lunch with everyone, we were at her funeral. We need to make the most of our time together and really cherish the moments that we are together and really be grateful for them. Through our cooking and through spending time together in the kitchen is one really good way of doing that. And these recipes are what memories are made of.